This is Colin O'Keefe here again for LXPN TV. Earlier this week, the IRS released its final rules for the Affordable Care Act's shared responsibility provision for employers. And as a result, the Affordable Care Act's employer mandate has been delayed again. Joining me now to walk us through these most recent rules is Pepper Crutcher. He is an attorney with Bulch and Bingham in Jackson, Mississippi, and he is an author on the firm's blog, The Excellent Affordable Care Act Review. Pepper, first, what can you tell me about the employer mandate being delayed? What, what exactly is going on here? Who does it apply to? What are the basics? Well, um, it's been oversold in the media generally, uh, not by you, but by a lot of general media. In fact, the employer mandate hasn't been delayed. Here's what's happened. It's made the news. For employers who are just barely large employers, that is an, an a, a annual average of 50 or more employees, during 2014, and therefore who will be treated under the employer mandate in 2015, if you are less than 100 employees, you have an opportunity to postpone your mandate until 2016 with three important provisos. When you file your information return in 2016, claiming this exemption for 2015, you must say that you did not change cost sharing or policy terms adverse to employees after February 9, 2014, that you did not cut work hours, that you did not cut jobs. And in order to get in this bubble or to be in a small employer, uh, after February 9, 2014, and you must sign the return swearing to those things, which makes you subject to civil and criminal penalties if you're lying. That, that's what's been called a postponement of the employer mandate. Now, for employers bigger than this bubble group, your mandate is still January 1, 2015. For all the plan design and other things the ACA does for, for everybody, they're in effect. Uh, there are other pieces of transitional relief, but this is the big piece that's made news, and it's quite frankly being oversold. I see. And second, since these rules came down, a, a full 225 or, or 227 pages worth, I understand you've been reading through all of them and have already started a series of posts on it. So uh, in looking at these rules, what else is there? What else should employers be aware of? A lot of stuff. And, and, and sadly, when I talk to groups of employers, the, the reaction I'm too often getting is uh, well, my, one of my fra favorite blues musicians is a guy named Mose Allison from Tippo, Mississippi. He has a great blues lyric that says, uh, I don't worry about a thing because nothing's going to be all right. <laughs> well, many employers just got their heads stuck in the sand hoping, please to God, let this go away. Uh, they need this time the government has given them to get ready for what's about to happen. So, for example, if you have lease workers, the final mandate rule that we now finally have gives us some pretty good clarification about whose responsibility for mandate purposes these lease workers are. Now, there's an article I posted up on www.acareview.com on that issue. Um, if you have union represented employees, this final mandate rule gives the union extra leverage on you, if you're an employer, in labor negotiations and if you've got a current labor contract, uh, because it allows the union to say no to your proposal of qualifying affordable coverage and by doing so to expose you, the employer, to the full employer mandate penalty, because your contract proposal is not going to be deemed to be an offer of qualifying affordable coverage. And I could, I, I could go on and on, but this you know, lots of federal regulations are root, uh, seem to be written to, to say nothing at great length. Well, this one actually is, almost every word has meaning in this one, and it's tightly packed in there. And employers need to be paying attention, and I wish they were. Well, they can definitely be sure uh, to swing by your publication to find out the latest. Uh, once again, that was Pepper Crutcher of Balch and Bingham for more of his insight on these new rules. As I mentioned, he's rolling out a four-part series with two parts already out. Be sure to check it out. It's at ACA Review. Com. And if you're not already watching us here on LXPN, be sure to swing by LXPN.com where you can find more of these video interviews and curated commentary with the Lex Blog Network's more than 8,000 members. It is the world's largest legal blog network and one that has right now a lot of commentary on the Affordable Care Act. Thank you for joining me today, Pepper. Thank you.